Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in my shop. Aaron Mackey's here. Mitch, looking after the cameras. Thank you, Mitch. Last episode, we did the shimming on the transmission, so that's all done. So what we're going to do now is to assemble these, these case halves. I've got some gasket goo. I'm going to sp spread it on one side. Put the gasket on, the cases will go together, and then we're going to flip it over, and then we have to do some modifications on the on the clutch parts and and the cam and the housing, the side case. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to be working on on the milling machine, and we also have a little bit of TIG welding. I think you find that that interesting. So. I'm going to spread some gasket goo. We're going to put this together. Thanks for tuning in. I got a pallet knife. Very handy for spreading gasket. Gasket goo. Because you don't want a whole lot, you just want a little skim. What this does is to hold the gasket in place. It stops it from slipping. And you only do one side usually because if you do both sides, it makes it a lot harder when you have to take the engine apart again. So you just put it on one side. Okay, that's the dowel pin there. After the case goes together, we have to knock the dowel pins through. And there's two of them, one here, one over there. And that's what aligns all the bearings really accurately. Not a lot of engines have dowel pins like that. It's one of the features of an Aramaki. So on the transmission, I've oiled all the gears and that when I was when I was much younger, I was 18, I had a Yamaha 350 and I took the whole engine apart to change seals and rings and all that. And I, I put it back together again and I didn't put any oil on the gears. And when I started up the bike, it made this terrible noise and I feared the worst. So I took the whole motor apart again and there was nothing wrong with it. I just didn't put any oil on the gears. So I'll never do that again. Always put oil on the gears. All this gasket goo is going to hold the gasket nicely in place. I got the flywheels in since last time. This, even though I sanded this down, this is a little bit of a press fit. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of force, just a little bit. I'll put a little bit of right here. And I'll put a little bit right here on the seal. So it needs a little bit of force here, just a little bit. Hear the sound change as it seats? You can hear a different sound. Sounds more solid. All stainless steel. I got I got nylocks for the for the fastener. There's my nylock. So I'm gonna flip it over in a moment and then we'll finish up up the tightening and then we'll work on the clutch and things like that. It's getting heavier now that I got the flywheel in and things like that. Not, a, not just a set of empty cases anymore. Here's a dowel pin, so we're going to knock this one in first, and then and and then I'll tighten the screws up.
Okay, one dial pin, there's one more. Yeah, see all the gasket goo oozing. I got some really nice metal here. It's made, uh, actually this is made in Italy. You can hear it. Okay, and then also, also this is the clutch gear. It's got its own ring. So this is out of, out of Germany. So what I gotta do is I, I, I put on some shims here. Can you see here? Here's the needle bearings. And then I put in, I got a few shims in here. So we're going to check to see what the end play is. Because I think it's supposed to be between 8 and 10 thou. So this fits over like that. There we go. And then there's a thrust washer there. And then what I'm going to do is to put on the inner clutch gear. And we will check the end play. There we go. So look, see there's a little bit of end play there. We'll set up the up the dial indicator again. Because all this stuff has to be checked. And then I'm going to show you something else that's going on here. And I realized that I had the same problem last time I built a race motor. And I had to do a modification. So let's just check this right now. So we're looking for 8 to 10 thou. There you go. Okay, so if I pressed, I'll set this to zero again. There we go. There we go. So, so we have some play. That looks good. We're going to leave it like that. So I'll show you the next thing. This is the is the clutch hub and it fits over the splines like so. There we go. So then this goes on top like that. So what I want to show you here, can you see there's a space in between here? That, that's a lot of space, and, and when the first of the clutch plates go down there, it's not held by very much on that spline at all. So what has to happen is this has to be lifted up. And I, I put an indicator on there, and I've got 155 thou that it can, it can move up and down. Not sure why it's not. There it is. So that, look, there's 100, 155 thou. There's over an eighth of an inch there that it can move up and down. Also, what's happening is this is getting very close to the inner part of the side case. I'm going to grab the side case and I'll show you. What I was mentioning was that, okay, the clutch hub goes in, oops, goes in there. And I could tell from as I had the case on that there was very little clearance in between there. I took some cardboard, took some cardboard down like that, and there was very little clearance. Then after you add the gasket under here, it moves the case out a little bit. So that's a problem. So how I fixed it last time, and it is probably an, an unorthodox way of fixing things, There you go. I made a spacer. There's the spacer, and the spacer goes right there. That's where the spacer goes. But can, can you see what's happening? It looks like it's a little too small, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this with a felt pen, like that. I don't know anyone else who's done this. But it worked on my last race motor, and it was fine. So what I'm going to do is to take a little hacksaw. This is a, a thin blade, 
less than 30 thou. I'm going to I'm going to cut that and I'm going to cut down into this. I'm going to open it up, close it up when it's underneath these these threads, and do a little a little TIG weld on either side. How about that? Have you ever seen anything like that before? Probably not. So okay, that's the plan. So let's let's put the plan into action. Stretching. I can feel it give. If it breaks, well, it breaks. I'm hoping it doesn't. There we go. So now I have to close it up. That's what we want, just like that. I'm using a diamond file. For how smooth they are, it's quite amazing how fast they cut. I still got some threads there, although not not as many as I had. Here's the here's the nut that goes on there. Hmm. Well, I might have to do some modifications. Oh. Yeah, I've lost some threads there. Okay, well, we will, we'll, we'll work on that, but you see what happened there. Maybe I need to make a new washer that's not quite as thick. Okay, that's one thing. Now we'll work on something else. Okay. We're going to talk about the camshaft a little bit now. This is basically how the camshaft fits together here. We've got the tappets. We'll put those in. Then, then you can at least see what's going on here. Because this is all about the camshaft. There's a, a needle bearing that fits down in there. Then there's a thrust washer. Hardened steel. Something like that. And here's the camshaft, like that. So it's supported down there, and then it it needs extra support out here, and and there's a bearing. So what I want to show you is the old bearing and the new bearing. Here's the old bearing, and it came out of here, and the camshaft which used to be in here, was in the race bike, which got stolen. So I don't have that camshaft anymore. This is the camshaft that I have. So this is larger. The old, the old camshaft had a 15 millimeter shaft. This has a 17 millimeter shaft. So I had to get a new bearing. So you can see that, that the ODs are the same. And this is larger, this is 17 millimeters, this is 15, but I couldn't get this a 17 ID and, and the same width. I could only get a larger width. So, and, and what that means is that the oil seal is also larger as well. So I had to do some modifications in the case. I'm gonna show you some little slideshow now. Here's the case, and that's what it used to look like, looking from the outside of the case. And then if I, if I put the seal on top, it's the new oil seal with the larger bore. It's basically the same size as the casting underneath, so I don't have anything to hold the seal. So what I did is I made up a, a piece of aluminum. This is one quarter inch thick. This is 6061, and it's gonna hold the seal. 
I set it up in the mill and I, I milled away the inner ring and also also the webbing. And then I took a, a Dremel and I, I cleaned it up a little bit more. And then I, I mixed up some epoxy, a two-part epoxy, and I glued in like you see over on the bench. So you can see here, I have glued in that piece of metal. So the oil seal has a lot of support now. So the oil seal is going to sit like that and it's going to be get held. Because otherwise, this is just going to be out, out in the air. So what's going to happen now is we're going to put this in the mill. I have to bore down. I can't take an, any metal out of this because that's all, already the right size for the bearing. It's a little bit of a press fit. So I have to, I have to match, match the spindle with the bore and then I have to bore down a little bit more. And then, and then after that, have to hold the tool in more and bore for the oil seal. And that's going to go down, down there. So let's go to the mill. Let's take a cut, see what happens here. So that should be centered. Okay. It's cutting the case and it's also, it's cutting the insert that I glued in. Can you see the, that's the insert right there. That's the case, that's the insert. So it's, so we are into the insert right now. So we're at 1.243, so 17th hour to come out. And that's it. So now we have to bore out the lower part, and that's for the bearing. Here's the cut. I'm, I'm still in, into the casting, so the bearing is going to be resting on the casting of the side cover. And the lower piece down there that I've added on, that all, all that does is to hold the oil seal. So just so you know what's going on. I'll take 75 foul. Cut. So you can, you can still see here how much I've got to go. See, see the side wall there? I still got a little ways to go. Okay, this is a little bit of a tricky bit because I have to I have to open up the tool bit 
because it's very hard to measure that little bit on the bottom. And I have to see how the tool bit is hitting, hitting on the sides. And then I don't want to, I don't want to take anything off. So it's going around, it's not, so it, it's not hitting anywhere. So let's try a little bit more, another, another couple thou. Okay, it's, I don't know if you can see that, but it just, it scored a little bit right there. Can, can you see that? Can you see that line there? It touched. Let's see what happens over here. Okay, so it, it's touching. It's, it's hitting here. So that means that I have to move, even though I'm at zero here, I've changed heights. This, this boring bar is longer than the indicator that went down. So I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna move it this way about a thou. So that's one thou, I've moved it one thou. Let's see what happens here. This is nerve wracking because if I screw up, then I don't, I've just lost the case. So, and I'm not talking about a law, like a lawyer when I say I've just lost the case. I'm talking as a machinist here. It is so close. So why don't we try it? What do you think? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm not gonna start from the top because it's gonna take out some metal on the very, on the very first part. So I'm gonna go down and that's where I'm gonna start right there. So if it cuts a little bit oversized, it doesn't really matter because I've got the top part, so we're going to start here and we're going to go down to zero and then I'll switch it off and we'll pull the tool out and we'll see if it's, see if it's good. Okay, here we go. It looks the same, okay. Shall we take a chance and, and, and press in the bearing? See what happens? That's a yes, isn't it, Mitch? Okay, we're gonna say that that's good. I guess if anything happens, I can, I can scrape it. So I've got some uh, things here. I've got a bearing. This just goes inside, see that? So that's a good, that's gonna go on top of the bearing. And then on the other side, we're gonna press onto that. So this is larger than the bearing. So that should get it started straight. Oh, look at that. That was a nice fit. Woohoo! Even Mitch had a smile on his face there. He knows when things fit properly. Okay, so we're gonna assemble this with the cam and check the end play now. See what's happening. Okay, we're gonna check the end play. That's the plan. 
and we have to put a gasket in there because the gasket is, is crucial to finding the end plate. I sanded this a little bit so that it slips in there. It's a little bit loose, but not bad. It's not quite right because it's this case is not seating. Can you see there's a gap there? So I need to do some investigating, I think. I just got my soft hammer. Okay, something's, anyway. Something's not quite right inside the case here. So that's what happens when you build a race motor. It, it's a little bit of, of trial and error. You see if it fits, if it doesn't fit, you have to figure out why, so. Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I know we're halfway through a video, but Six days has passed since I last put on the case and we discovered that there was a gap. So what happened was that was the cam gear, that's this, this gear here, it was too wide. So let's do a little slideshow right now and I'll show you what I did. Here's my race gear. You can see how it's kind of raised up a little bit right there. I measured a stock gear and this gear is about 60 thou wider. So that's a, almost a sixteenth of an inch. So I went outside on my belt sander and I, I took most of it off on my belt sander and then now I've got it mounted on my surface grinder that I hardly ever use. I've got red felt pen. That shows me which parts haven't been ground. Here it's shiny. So it's a little bit at an angle like that. So I ground it smooth so it was flat and then I pressed the camshaft right back in. So now it's a 16th inch shorter so then I, I check for end play. So that's my setup. Let's go back to the bench now and we'll actually look at the end play and see what it is right now. So there we go. I've pressed in the gear and uh oh there's a shim missing there let me oh look at that there's the shim right there so we'll put the shim back on the cam i did break the gasket but i was clumsy but i need the i need a gasket there just to so i can See, see what the end play is. So here we go. And I did sand the cam so it goes onto the bearing nicely. That sounded pretty precise there. We use two screws. Now we put on the half inch plate that's going to hold the magnetic base for the dial indicator. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, we're looking for five thou. Five thou, happy with that. In the first part of this episode, you saw me make up a washer. It's a two-part washer that I TIG welded. Well, I wasn't happy with that, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. I took off the washer and I made up another washer. I did a slightly better job on the welding. So this one is an eighth of an inch, 0.125. 
This one is 100,000, so I want to talk about why this one is less than that and why I think this is the right size. So inside the clutch, there's a clutch plate that fits down like so. It fits over these splines and it has to engage. It has to engage on these splines. So that's one of the crucial things. So there's, there's, there's two things going on. This has to engage at the bottom part of the spline. So if this is raised up, you're not gonna get the engagement. So that's partly why I made these washers here. So I made an assumption that this is narrower than a stock hub. Here's the stock hub. You can see this one's pretty heavy. See how much wider it is? It's also helical. This is a straight cut. So I figured out a way that I could measure this. So let's go over to the mill and we'll, and we'll talk about the assumption that I made. We're on the mill here. We're not gonna do any, any milling, but I'm gonna use this. This is just a quarter inch rod. And I've got the, I've, I've got the digital readout. So if I pull this down now, I've got a flat plate here. So I zero my Z. So now if I put the gear on here and I go down to that, that's gonna measure in between this surface and that surface. Otherwise, I don't know how you do this. Okay, so we got 406 thou. Can you see, can you see over there? 406 thou. So now we're gonna put on the other gear. So this is a hundred thou, so it should end up about, should we say 506? Anyway, we're adding on a hundred thou. So we got 502, so it's a difference of 4,000. So my assumption that this was a lot narrower doesn't make any sense. So let's go back to the bench and we'll, we'll talk about this situation a bit more. Okay, I'm gonna assemble this a little bit. So this goes ov over the needle bearings and then there's a, a washer here and I wanna show you about the washer because there's a few, few things that I can't explain. So in the book, there's a washer, it's number 15. Now I found some washers. These are hardened washers and each of them is 80 thou thick, which is two millimeters. And I've got a lot of shims. I can't find any other shims. And it, in the book, it doesn't tell you how thick the washer is. So I can only assume that it's two millimeters thick because I can't find any other. So this is where the washer goes. And I'm showing you this because that washer, it sets the height, this bottom part rests on the washer. So the washer is helping to set the height. So here's the, here's the clutch hub going on. This will make sense in a moment, I hope. Okay, there's the clutch hub going on. So it's bottomed out. And then I put on the internal hub. Oh, what I'm gonna do is, okay, I B blasted this a little bit. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a couple of uh, marks with a, with a felt pen. And that's, th those are those two right there. You're probably wondering why I'm doing this. I'll show you. It's to check how the hub is engaging, how the, how the clutch plate is engaging. So here, here's the inner plate. It's, it's friction on one side, and it's a, uh, a, a steel plate on the other side. So I put that down, and that's bottomed out now. Now I've got a dentist tool. So what I can do is I can put that right down to the bottom and I can scribe it. So now that I know, now I know how far the, the clutch plate is engaged on the splines. 
that's the part I want to show you. Okay, so now I can take this off. So can you see here, see there's my marks right there and there. And if I take the clutch plate, that's about the right amount of engagement. Okay, it's going to go that way. So if I put that right like that, up to those marks, it's, it's just catching on that spline. So that's, so this is the right height. The other thing that's going on, it's a compromise because I got to put the lock nut on here and there's a lock washer, but when I put the washer on, it raises it up. So this has to screw on there. So what I've decided to do, not to use the lock washer, but to use red Loctite. And the red Loctite, I'm hoping is gonna be strong enough to hold this in. There we go. So when this goes all the way down, you can see it's still got a couple threads high. So it's a compromise. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. So I'm, I'm happy with how that worked. Well, not 100% happy, but mostly happy with the height because it's gonna hold the clutch plate. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching me fool around with this Aramaki motor. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us some coffees, it'd be much appreciated. Helps us out. Take care. See you next episode.